Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Shay and you're listening to the Anatomy of a Trend podcast for fashion entrepreneurs in the making. I study fashion design in London and continue to work in production, sales and marketing. I use my technical skills to help clients bring their fashion collections to life who are new to the fashion industry. So in this podcast, you'll get a mix of technical guidance along with an insight into the industry as I talk about my own experiences and journey. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, subscribe to this podcast and stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the second episode where we talk about technical design. And today we're going to be talking about what pattern makers are. In other words, the person who creates the 3D version of your design in a real life scale. They are responsible for creating the patterns that will then be used in the manufacturing process to actually create your full production run. So these are very important people and they're highly skilled. A pattern maker and a technical designer overlap very much. The only real difference is that a technical designer creates the paperwork for making sure that the design is communicated in the right way, not only visually, but with the sewing instructions. A technical designer also tends to be in many stages of the design process, so they can be in the very beginning, and they tend to oversee um, the pattern making, the sample development, and they can even go into production, which is what I usually do. So pattern makers can be hired full-time as permanent staff, or they can be freelance, and this usually tends to be the case. Creating a technical design that's visually explanatory is very important, because in my experience, I found that a lot of the pattern makers and seamstresses that companies tend to work with come from abroad. So you have to expect that there will be a bit of a language barrier that you need to anticipate for. So making sure that you have color coding, pictures, as much information is really, really important. But generally speaking, pattern makers are quite intuitive at understanding what it is that you want to design. Now, pattern making can be done in two ways. The traditional way is to do it by hand. So you get paper out on a big table and you get a ruler out and you just start drafting shapes and figures onto a mannequin or from templates that are already made. Free hand pattern making is much more suitable when you're draping something on a mannequin and then you need to transfer it into a pattern. If you have a very simple design that's very common, pattern making usually tends to go down the digital route because a lot of templates are already digitized and all they have to do is adjust the pattern in a digital software. This can be a little bit more expensive, but as you can expect, it's more accurate and it can be done in much quicker time. When you are doing pattern making by hand, if you are not very detail oriented and you don't really do the measurements properly, it's really easy to have measurements that are not aligned. It's really easy to have a garment where the measurements are not correct. So if you can afford to get patterns done digitally, I would recommend that. If you do start with paper patterns, you can digitize them at a later stage. There are many companies that can do that. You just have to do a quick little search, but I'll put those resources in later episodes. And they can actually scan your pattern into their software. They can correct it, make sure that it all matches up, and then they can grade it. Now, grading is when you create multiple sizes of the same pattern. Doing this by hand can take a very long time and it is, my experience, it is quite honestly very painful and tedious. So again, I would recommend going into a production house where they have this technology and just getting it graded. Something to bear in mind is when you choose your manufacturer, looking at what they produce and the quality of what they produce is really important. But you also have to take into consideration what software do they use, if they use any at all. If they don't use any software, you might have to consider switching manufacturers at a later stage, unless there's a specific reason why you want to work with one particular manufacturer. So make sure that if you do approach a company that creates digital patterns, that you have a file that is compatible with the manufacturer that you will be manufacturing with. Otherwise, you'll be wasting a lot of time and a lot of money. It's also worth considering if you are working with a manufacturer abroad, if they don't have pattern makers in-house, you would want to consider getting your patterns made by a digital software so that you can actually send your patterns through a file instead of having to send your patterns through the mail or the post or by courier. It will contribute to a lot of time delays as well. 
So that is something to take into consideration. However, many garment manufacturers have their own seamstresses, have their own pattern makers, and a lot of them do have their own computerized software. You just have to make sure that you know what software they're using and what files they save it in to make sure that the extension is the same in case you ever need to change it for whatever reason. Pattern makers are very skilled. If you are manufacturing locally or you're working with a freelancer, it's good just to check in every once in a while to make sure that they understand your design and make it very easy for them to communicate with you in case they have any questions. I would be overseeing quality and just checking up on the manufacturers, not only for the pattern, but for other things as well. But the designers sometimes like to be involved and like to physically touch and feel and see the garment that is in the making. So if that is something that you would prefer, consider having a local pattern maker. You can get a lot of companies abroad who can do the pattern making for you. However, you will obviously have a little bit less control, but they can send you the physical garment once it's made so that you can approve it and make any changes. Before choosing a pattern maker, ask to see examples of their work and to see their portfolio. You want to look for someone who has a lot of technical skills. So once a pattern maker has created the patterns and they're fairly happy with the measurements, they're going to create a toile. We mentioned this in the last episode, which is basically a dummy version of a garment in very cheap fabrics, similar to what you'll be using in your final fabrics. They will check the measurements, they'll make sure that the fabric is cut correctly. And a lot of the times you do get pattern makers who are also seamstresses and they will design the garment and also stitch the garment. So this is really good. If you can find someone who can do both, I would recommend that because there is consistency. However, if a pattern maker does her job correctly, there shouldn't be any problem once someone starts actually sewing it together. So depending on whether your pattern maker is part of your manufacturer or whether they're freelance or whether they're part of your in-house team, they can start communicating with the manufacturer if there are any issues or if there's any miscommunications or if anything needs to be clarified. So usually they will tend to help you with this, but sometimes this can fall in the role of the technical designer or the production manager. In the end, whatever changes have gone through in the sample development process, the pattern maker will edit the patterns or the digital files and make sure that the pattern is the correct pattern and up to date, ready for manufacturing. Now on average in London, a pattern maker will be anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds. A solid average is about 25 pounds. You do find some pattern makers who will go all the way up to 50 pounds. These pattern makers are trained in a very difficult craft and it's usually tailoring or couture or costume design. And so they tend to charge a little bit more but as you can expect with their level of skill, that is just the rate that you have to pay. So understanding pattern design is essential. You don't have to know everything about it, but you should start to begin to learn the basics. I myself am not that much of a pattern maker. I understand the basics, but it is not my forte. However, I do try and familiarize myself with sewing methods, names of finishes, usually the cost of finishing so that I have an idea of how to help my clients best when I am helping them design a garment. So how do you familiarize yourself with garment construction? The best way is to just watch online content. You can watch YouTube videos, you can watch catwalk shows. I'm sure there's um, many fashion shows, you know, in the UK, in America that you could follow. This will help you familiarize yourself with terminology that you may need to understand later on when you're designing your collection. If you have the space for a sewing machine, or if you have a sewing machine, I would recommend getting one. You could learn how to sew. You could get magazines. They already have pre-made templates and patterns in them. And this is a great way to start understanding in your mind how pieces go together and how things should be sewn together. You can also buy sewing magazines. This is just an easy way to flick through and just, again, familiarize yourself with the terminology that is used in the sewing community. And last but not least, if you really do want to dive into it and give it a try, I would recommend some books which I have linked in the description for you to buy in Amazon. These are really great at just beginner sewing. You can start small. In this podcast, I will be talking about the different types of finishes, the different names of a garment, which will come on later. But if you do want a sort of reference guide, I would recommend at least getting one of these books so that you can kind of refer back to it later on when you need to. 
So just to summarise, based on your budget, you will need to decide whether you want to work with a freelance pattern cutter, whether you want to do a freehand method or whether you want to go digital. If you are going abroad for your manufacturing needs, you might want to stick with digital. And if you're staying local, you could afford to do paper by hand pattern making. If you do choose to go for a freelance pattern maker, I will link some websites down below where you can find some pattern cutters who will work on a freelance basis. Some of them only work by hand and some of them actually do have a software that they have access to that they can then produce digital files of pattern making if you need that in the future. It all really takes a little bit of research, investigating and like anything else, it takes a little bit of time. Once you get close to picking your pattern makers, ask if they have a website that you can see if they have any referrals or reviews. If they don't, ask if you can see their samples in person, if that is possible. And don't be afraid to ask for any reviews or um, referrals from other people so that you can call them up, previous clients, and actually speak to them directly. This shouldn't necessarily be a problem. If a pattern maker is reluctant to give you any referrals, then perhaps you might want to move on. Otherwise, in the meantime, while you are in the search for finding a pattern maker, take the time to familiarize yourself with terminology, pick up a sewing book, watch some fashion shows, or even just find some YouTube tutorials, which I can also help with. So there you go. That is all that we have for today. I hope you learned something about pattern cutting. It is a bit of a widespread subject, but we will get into more detail as we go. If you have any questions or you would like to contribute to this episode, please feel free to comment down below. And if you like this channel and you like what you've been hearing and you learned something, then please subscribe. And I look forward to speaking to you next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.